Kelly got here, and we oh. wish anyone who was possibly in an accident and it prevented her from getting here an hour ago that hopefully all is well with them. Yes, we and don't know I, who it is, but it just sometimes you're just stuck. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you you see these people, and you know, I, I did have a horrible guilt attack when I was I was sitting there being just furious yeah. that I was running late. And um, I'm like, oh, my God, somebody's probably hurt pretty bad. That's why this is taking so long. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where you're like, okay, breathe. We'll get, we'll get it done. It will be fine. Right. Well, can I just tell <laughs> you? You have sparkly shoes. Sorry, I'm being very distracted. No, I looked I know. down. Look I'm like, sh- I'm like it literally Ooh. was a shiny object <laughs> that you saw. Oh, my God. Squirrel, squirrel. No, mm-hmm. um, no. Can I, can I just tell you, um, speaking of, of that, you were texting me understandably wondering where the fuck I was mm-hmm. and um, I didn't hear it but I have a funny story about my phone so when I go to my um, my some of the offices that I work in you know I, I mm-hmm. turn it on mute well I'd forgotten to take it off mute but that didn't matter yesterday because I managed working from home to lose my phone in my own house now <laughs> now the mute sad so you can't call and, it uh, right right okay. <laughs> so you're waiting for the you're trying to find the buzz oh yeah, yeah yeah but 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 here's here's the other part I have an I have an Apple watch connected to my iPhone and I could see from the the dot on my phone that they were still connected so that phone was within a certain number of yards of me I know this right mm-hmm. I'm like okay so I go to try to do my find iPhone thing right mm-hmm. on my computer it's not working on my computer so I'm like okay my iPad will find my phone for me right my iPad was dead <laughs> oh, I'm like, so now I'm messengering somebody on the computer I'm mm-hmm. like could you please call me but at this point I don't know I have it on mute yet mm-hmm. okay so I'm like call me thank god when she did it was it was muted or it was buzzing loud enough and I, I finally found it how Colleen wait, how did wait. this phone land inside of one of my tennis shoes <laughs> In my tennis shoe, Colleen. <laughs> I never would have found this phone. No, no, not at all. I have, I have wandered around. Shoe. I've wandered around, and, and I've, I've dropped things, and I like the phone. I'm like, where did I put my phone? Where did I put my phone? We had, and 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 it had somehow slid out of my purse and into the side pocket on the passenger car door. Nice. So, and it's black. And yeah. it's black, and it's right up against it, which may – and then – so that that's when uh, we had uh, – uh, my guy uh, does the MS tram, and I loan a van so oh, that they have a support oh. vehicle. Oh, right. And so last year when we were cleaning it out, we found someone's iPod that had actually been there from the year before. Ah, uh, so. <laughs> Because once again, black – Oh, right yeah. up against this pocket. He's oh, I thought I lost it. No, yeah. we found it. For sure. Yeah. Reminds I mean, just, they're just tiny. I couldn't find my mom's phone once. She left it on the way to the airport, and the taxi driver, kind enough, brought it back. Oh, that's nice. That customer put it, put it in her room. But it's a black phone on a black granite, granite countertop. I walked around her, her, her condo mm-hmm. for like 15 minutes. I walked past it like five times. Oh, sure you did. It was completely camouflaged. Nice. And I suddenly went. Oh, there it is. Reminds, I mean, right there. Have you seen mm. the Allstate commercial with Mayhem where he's like, bzz, bzz, I'm your cell phone? No, you don't Probably. watch regular TV. I don't, yeah, but I, I, I'm sure. Oh, God. But it's it, one of the funniest. Oh, but uh, Allstate's one of the things that when I'm watching stuff online, even though I, some of the stuff I've paid for commercial free and some I haven't, that that one pops Mayhem. Up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that guy. Um, but being that this is the Great Northern Sex Cast, you know, mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise us, and it may happen yet, that we get a story about a cell phone in somebody's butt. Yeah. Because <laughs> it will happen. Someone will do something. Uh, pun intended, ass nine. And oh, you're going through there. That was actually really artfully done. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for a survey. Mm-hmm. Sucker. Um, and okay, what this, is, what we this got? is a good one. This is mm-hmm. a really good one. Um, 4,175 people. So we're talking, that's a that's a nice chunk of, of peeps, right? Um, because, mm-hmm. you know, anything under 1,000, I'm like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you don't know. Um, BDSM, sex in public, partner sharing, and homoeroticism were um, in the top. All of those things were in the top five. Top five um, of, of like of everything, that, or the top the, five things that everybody liked. Oh, that everybody liked. Okay, not that they want to do, or that, but you know, they but they they fantasized. They, they about fan- it. Oh, okay. Ninety six percent of those surveyed have sexual fantasies, which I think the other four percent are lying. Like, <laughs> if they or, said that they. Or they're sleepy, or they're, or they're uh, uh, asexual. Asexual, yeah. That would be mm-hmm. the only possible explanation for mm-hmm. that, you know. Um, but uh, the most popular fantasy, drumroll please, a threesome. 
I I'm know. surprised that's so passe to me. Yeah. Well, it, it's still low. It's an enormous number. I mean, think about the conversation you have to have before you can even go down the path of figuring it out. I mean, that's not easy. I want to bring somebody home. Unless you met at a threesome or something. Oh, wow. I How don't often know. How that happen? You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, a threesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going through there. But you're going to have to, you know, this would be interesting. Or what, what are your thoughts of bringing someone in? And then you have to negotiate, you know, is it, a, is it, uh, is it another guy? Is it another gal? What are the you know we've we talked to you know we oh, talked yeah. when we talked to the swingers about paying attention to your new partner but not ignoring the other person? Yeah, I mean it's a lot of work. I, so I so I say. can understand why it stays a fantasy uh-huh. because in a because you don't have any of the work. I mean you know people say like be careful about meeting your heroes and all this other stuff or <laughs> careful what you wish. I could easily you know. Yeah. So keeping it a fantasy, I can see that. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. Because then it gets the job done. You, uh-huh. The reality may not be nearly as interesting yeah. as what's going on in your head. Yeah. Well, you're so funny because you literally you literally previewed the next mm. part of what um, one of the doctors that, condus- that conducted the survey, Dr. Justin Laymiller. Mm. Lay Miller, <laughs> I'm my 12 year old, my inner 12 year old coming out, um, said that interest in threesomes and group sex increase with age. Um, they get more popular into the 40s and 50s on, mm-hmm. for both sexes. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was kind of funny. So um, one of the um, there's the Kardashian effect came up. Mm-hmm. Um, so five foot two inches tall brunette hourglass figure was a man's ideal fantasy. Woohoo! Sorry, I'm, hourglass. Uh, yeah. yeah. I am one hell of an hourglass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Scarlett Johansson, though, who is none of the above, mm-hmm. was the top celebrity uh, fantasy for men. Channing Tatum was the women's. Okay, whatever. So 89% of participants wanted a threesome. More than a quarter wanted BDSM fantasies. 65% dreamed of submissiveness. 60% wanting to be dominant. So the submissive mm-hmm. was the bigger fantasy. How interesting is that? Well, we, we talked about this, uh, you know, before, but the oh. not thinking. Oh, okay. I don't want, I want to have all the fun, but none of the thinking. And, and honestly, they're the ones that are in control. Yeah. We've talked about that before yeah. too. You know, they, you know, you, you're, you're submissive until the moment you're not. Yes. That's how that works. <laughs> yes. Um, homoeroticism is interesting. And I, you know, we've never really had, shockingly, um, a real conversation about this. And I'd probably like to get like Dr. Markey, um, one of our, um, one of our sex experts in here. Um, she's literally is a doctor PhD. Um, 59% of heterosexual women fantasize about same sex activity compared to only 26% of men. So women are more likely to want to experiment that way than men. Mm -hmm. And my question is, I'd love to know what's behind that because that's been sort of something I have thought anecdotally was true for a really long time, though I have absolutely nothing to back it up other than oh, what I probably think. probably because it's less taboo. I mean, honestly, I mean, even 100 years ago when there were laws and, and there still are stuff like that, laws against homosexuality, it was always about guys. It's mm-hmm. like they didn't even think about, you know, you know the, the guys that were making the laws and doing guys either A, didn't think about it or didn't care what women were doing. So it's there's a hell of a lot less stigma about lesbian sex than mm-hmm. there is about uh, uh, guy you know gay sex. Yeah, I and so it's you know although so I can see why some folks just you know they may not even admit they have a fantasy about it. Yes, I mean it still is even though it's 2018. I mean yeah. hell, just you know women being sexual is still freaky to people. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> mm-hmm. 79% of men, 62% of women reported fantasizing about partner sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, and 58% of men daydreamed of watching their partners have sex with others. That does not surprise me, and I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a show, which I keep looking to see if there was any new episodes. I haven't checked in a while. But the show called Gigolos about um, these male hookers in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a common thing. A lot of men paid them to have sex with their, their partners, their wives, girlfriends, whatever. And I, I mean, had I not seen it for myself, I would have been surprised by it. Like the look on your face yeah, that I'm I seeing. Just, yeah. Cause I mean, the term for those look at, and I, and I don't like this word because it's been co-opted, but into using a lot of things, but you know, like a cuckold fantasy, mm-hmm. but you know, where, you know, it's going through there. And I just, um, it's, you know, it's like, 
it, 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 I think it's maybe a subset of the threesome fantasy. You just don't want to be involved. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be. Subset, she says. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. No, that just cracks yeah. me up the way. No. You're so like reasonable about it. <laughs> It's like you want to, you, you're curious about a threesome, but you're too uh, uh, freaked out to actually join in. So you'll just do it the other way. You just get someone else in oh, yeah. for your partner. I don't know. Yeah. Pinch it for me. Mm-hmm. And I'll take pictures. Um, so uh, the Kardashians come up in, as the number two story today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I really haven't picked on them in a super, super long time. No, I haven't actually I haven't heard anything about them. There's so much other, uh, so many more actual real atrocities happening out there that being appalled by the um, Kardashians or defending them has really gotten really low on the, yeah, on the, the radar. Only, the big, you know, it's pretty interesting when the biggest Kardashian story that you hear about in a while is something of actual substance, mm-hmm. which was Kim Kardashian helping free a woman, get a woman out of prison. <laughs> Like, what does that mean? Like, really, just let that sink in for a second. I know. That and, was, and I that really admire fascinated. that. And I'm yeah. thrilled that she was able to yeah. help that that woman. I have I have no problem. People say celebrities should just be. Cel-. No, no, they're, they're citizens. That just happens to be their job. And you might as well say, you know, anyone shouldn't have an opinion. It, their job is to be famous or their job is to act or their job is to sing. Yeah. Does not negate their, I think, you know, you're just jealous that they have a larger megaphone than you do. You know what's mm-hmm. funny, though, is I actually applaud, you know, when they when they take an actual action. Rather, I mean, I'm not terribly impressed by the people who just take the pulpit because it's available to them. Mm-hmm. But I love it when they actually go do something that makes a difference. And I mean, I, like Sean Penn spending six months in Haiti actually building things? Yeah, building something. Or mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian helping get this woman, you know, his mm-hmm. case You're to be heard to get her out of jail. Writing like, a big-ass check. Those mm-hmm. two, that's also a beautiful thing. But, I mean, they, you know, and everybody can say, oh, they have money. They should be giving more away. No, I don't even care about that. Mm-hmm. But they can, they can make things happen that other people can't. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. Um, Okay, so the... (laughs) But now back to the reality of the Kardashians. Mm -hmm. They have a list of vagina tips. (laughs) Because they have everything else. Well, they are so why would famous you, vaginas. So well, why, why wouldn't you want to brand your vagina with Kardashianism? <laughs> so there's this doctor. Oh, please don't tell me they've got like a Kardashian, like, you know, pushy wash or something like that. That would be, I'm surprised oh. they don't. Or so. Maybe they do. I don't know. Well, probably. you know, mm-hmm. you're not off because oh, here's the deal. Christ. Well, Dr. Lauren Stryker, she's mm-hmm. um, a gynecologist and she's got a book, um, kind of went through their most, the car- most famous Kardashian vagina advice and she kind of debunks it. Okay. okay. So the first one was um, uh, get a laser treatment post birth. She's saying, you know, you know, get it, get this. It's going to deal with, um, you know, the dryness and help it get back into shape and whatever. And she said the only thing it's going to do is remove thousands of dollars from your bank account. It's not going to take <laughs> floppiness or anything else that time will heal. What, what do you mean, like laser? I don't know. I just there's uh, certain things that we've decided to, do not need to go there. And yeah. I'm going to add lasers. Lasers, yeah, I'm adding my, lasers. No, no, no lasers in 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 the in, no. And all the parts that make up a women's reproductive system and women's genitalia, no lasers. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. So here goes to what you were what you were uh, predicting here. Vitamin E on the labia. Chloe, via her app, claims that it soothes irritation if applied to the labia. The doctor said, well, I don't necessarily disagree, but it's as good as any other wet, cool solvent. Mm-hmm. Stand by for Chloe Kardashian labia... Labia Rub. oil. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, vitamin E is good for scars and stuff like that. I don't know what's going through there, but I, 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 I'm just, I, most vitamin E comes in those little capsules. So I'm just, you know, you're snipping it open and squeezing it. I was just like, oh. <laughs> vitamin E <laughs> looms large in this whole thing. Chloe also thinks that you should take vitamin E because it will help tighten your vagina. <laughs> Dr. Stryker says lining can't be weak or strong because it's not a muscle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another claim about vitamin E from Chloe, moisturize the vagina with vitamin E. Dr. Stryker says, well, you could use it as lube. It's a little slippery. um, And you need to find out what is causing the dryness versus putting shit on it because you (laughs) saw it on an app. She didn't say it quite that way. That's Kelly's synopsis. Okay. Yeah, there there are products because you don't know... Where the how the vitamin E was processed, what other the stuff could be in there? There are lubricants that are FDA approved. 
for dryness, whether it's from, from medication or menopause or, un, you know, unknown causes, you know, because that happens a lot with women parts. You just you got the parts. You got issues. I had cramps for years, but there's no fibroids or nothing. I just had the parts. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK, well, well, we'll deal with this. But there are. Yeah. We have so many wonderful <laughs> items. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Not just random uh, 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 vitamin E, which has almost no FDA. Um, uh, all those supplements have almost, they have no um, value t- testing and all that sort of stuff. You have yeah. no idea where the hell that stuff comes well, from. Well, and a lot of it, you know, like you said, is full of a lot of junk because it's mm-hmm. not regulated. Yeah. So you don't know what you're getting. You have to just like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then more true to the persona we'd all come to know and either love Mm. or hate kim kardashian posted a picture of herself with kind of her legs splayed drinking pineapple juice saying google the effects of pineapple juice because it allegedly makes you smell sweet down there and um is what cucumbers celery uh pineapple i mean that's supposed to make sperm taste better and all that sort of stuff i mean i i i mean Honestly, you eat a lot of garlics and onions, you sort of smell like garlics and onions. What you go in it does come out of your pores. True. I'm not sure how much it comes out of, you know, vaginal secretions, but then again, secretions and secretions. Mm-hmm. But I, once again, just, you know, eat a balanced diet. You'll be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, remember someone who said, put a pineapple around your dick? Yeah, something well, like that. Was grapefruiting, grapefruiting, and all, and all that. Good just, stuff. I just, I, I just think that you know, certain citric acids. Once again, you know, you know, I mean, pineapple juice is good. Go ahead and drink it, but I don't think it's gonna, you know, make, you know, make any secretions in your body all that sweeter or nicer or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, now we have a dick pic guru coming on the scene. <laughs> How to send the perfect dick pic? Yeah. Oh God. Yes. No, 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 no. Don't send the dick pic. Nobody wants to see your dick. They just don't. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. But mm-hmm. if you're going to, let's listen to Tommy Joyce. <laughs> okay. Um, now, this is a guy which cracks me up. He's He hasn't dated a woman in three years and he's still single. So mm-hmm. just saying. But he has sent uh, one special picture to around 40 women that he's mainly come across on Tinder. And he says, I only have two classics in my file. Um, I have a before and after shot, and I just send the same one over and over, but I pretend I've taken it just then. <laughs> I never, I never, I didn't realize they had a freshness factor or a shelf life. I, I didn't. Did you? He even knows which pose is his best side. He poses from the left. <laughs> so I just I'm so con- But isn't most of the dick pics aren't they up from above? Isn't it? I mean, I don't know. I mean, do, do you, how do you get a left or, or right shot? I well, mean, you hold it down, hold and it you down, know how you do the you know how you do the thing that reverses the camera, so you make oh, it like a mirror, mm-hmm. and you can get all sorts of different. I things. don't know. I just yeah. So, <laughs> He says that uh, he believes that 95% of people on Tinder are after rude pictures. They want them. Um, he said he's had varying responses to his dick pics. Worst response was, that's not for me. The best response was, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> well, this is um, three years, huh? Yeah, we could, I, I, I think he sort of negates his entire concept <laughs> there. I'm just going to giggle. Over. I'm sorry. It's, just, it's totally giggle worthy. Yeah. I uh, just, no. And for whatever reason, we can't seem to get out of that family right now because next up is Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Which okay. One, which one's that again? I don't think about uh, Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, there's uh, a relationship and mm-hmm. marriage hints out there. Um, apparently, dating transgender student Sophia Hutchins. Uh, forced to, they've denied that they've been dating. Um, this 22 year old uh, went to her official Instagram account. And said, "That's a fifty-year-old. That's a fifty-year age difference." Yeah, is Caitlyn seventy? Yeah, they're seventy-something. Yeah, she is. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. sounds more like a publicity stunt on her part. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. That's just. <laughs> That's just so wrong. <laughs> yeah. So there's this coy little Instagram game going, um, and apparently there's a $78,000 ring 
somewhere uh, floating around that we're going to see soon. No, I don't think so. No, yeah. that's no. Uh, there's there, there's two. No, <laughs> I, I don't. Fifty years is a bit much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if that is true, then maybe there needs to be some psychological counseling on both sides because. Mm-hmm. There is no way in hell that Caitlin isn't more savvy than that. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. To be S- caught up in that sort of shit. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. But they all make their living off of the tabloids. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Sophia Hutchins is her name. Lena Dunham. Uh, post- oh, I haven't heard her from her in a while. Does she still... She's I, never show anymore, right? Because I don't have HBO. So that's been over with for a while, right? I think so. Um, I, I don't have HBO anymore either. Um, but I think there was a season or two left when, when, my, when I stopped paying. Um, but she's uh, kind okay, of... Caitlin is uh, 68 years old. Okay. All right. So, yeah. That's, that's still... 46 that, years Yeah, that's old. still too many. 46 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Lena Dunham, if, if you know anything about the show, one of the things she was never shy about was getting naked, mm-hmm. ever. And um, she, uh, well, I did see her judging um, a, a trans, uh, 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 okay, like a transvestite competition. Like, those are the ones that... She was like, was she a guest host on like RuPaul or a different Yeah, thing? it was a RuPaul. It, she was on there with RuPaul, but they were doing a competition of the, like the good and evil selves of mm-hmm. these. Um, oh, okay. What so are they called? The ones that dress up. Drag. Drag. Drag, yeah. drag competition. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. it was. I couldn't think of the, I couldn't think of the name. Um, anyway, and uh, it was, uh, that's the last thing I've seen her do. But apparently she's posted before and ab- after pictures of herself when she was 138 pounds and now she's 162 pounds. And she says she's a lot happier now than she was with the 24 pound weight gain. She said, um, in her thinner days, she was quote complimented all day and propositioned by men and on the cover of tabloids about diets that don't work. She was also sick in the tissue and the heads and subsisting on only small amounts of sugar, tons of caffeine and a purse pharmacy. And now she says she is happy, joyous and free. (laughs) You know, it is, it is, it is amazing that, at her, at her, what you said, one hundred and thirty something, one hundred thirty eight versus one hundred sixty. Okay, so and she was considered large at one hundred and thirty eight. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's, she's. I think she's short. Mm-hmm. The cameras do a number. Yeah, yeah. And I, but whatever. even so, that's just really funny. Yeah, of course she's happy at one hundred sixty two. She's not watching every damn thing that goes into her freaking mouth. Mm-hmm. I mean, if she had to do that much work for one hundred and thirty eight pounds, yeah, you know, she just. Yeah. It's going through there, and you know, and she could probably, you know, do just fine just writing, you know, um, instead of, you know, instead of torturing herself to go on, you know, on she, screen. She doesn't mind it. She calls mm-hmm. herself a body positivity warrior. Yeah. So, yeah, she doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, this week's sex robot story. Ta-da! What do we got? It's a, it's about a droid named Samantha who has a family mode. So it's kind of like switching to airplane mode, only this one doesn't talk dirty when it's in family mode. <laughs> Dear, how was your day? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the kids, uh, the report card came in today. Uh, would you like meatloaf or hot dish for dinner? What, what do we talk? I mean, I'm, I'm go, sort of going into, when I think family mode, I'm thinking more 50s mode. I can't imagine that. It's still not incredibly sexist. Well, basically, it just doesn't say all of the really you know, provocative things and the creator, um, or rather one of the enthusiasts anyway, um, says that he allows his, uh, uh, sex doll to play with his kids. Um, and they, they sit there and hang out and she's just like a family member. So she's like, a, <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. Okay. So now, so he goes on a TV show to talk about how the sex doll, he flips her into family mode and she hangs out with everybody. And then God knows what happens when he flips her back because he is married. But um, now Dr. Kathleen Richardson, she's a professor of ethics and culture of robots, um, said um, children will imitate the machines if they get brought up with them. A daughter's going to grow up and think that mommy wasn't pretty enough. And this is damaging and scarring to children and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It depends on how they're doing it. Just, I mean, it sounds, it's just, that's just a little weird. So I have this, I've spent a zillion dollars on this doll. Mm-hmm. He's married, so obviously the spouse knows about it. Mm-hmm. Who's going through there. And 
there's a and it just sort of sits there and it mm-hmm. is like I'm sort of confused about why this is a thing. Mm-hmm. I can't. A lot of times I can like zip into some sort of crevice and come up with something that might make any sense. Mm-hmm. Not this time. Okay. No, no, not not at all. I don't under. Yeah. It just that's a weird. We just you know, and, I, and I'm and I'm usually fine, but I just I don't under I don't understand what it's doing <laughs> in I don't family either. mode. <laughs> no, no, I don't. No, mm-hmm. the only the only family friendly robot that I can get behind um, was the one on the Jetsons, mm-hmm. the maid. Yeah, what was her name? It's going to drive me nuts. Um, are you an Elon Musk fan? Is this the, the, just the Dubis that just sort of shows up and drops off submarines that don't work? Well, he did that. Okay. But he also is And puts behind. a car in space. I know he's got some sort of fancy semi-truck that he's doing. I, mean, I get... Tesla. Yeah, Tesla. I mean, I, SpaceX. I, he's got some good stuff. I don't think he's actually made any money. I don't... Yeah. Well, he seems he to just, have he, it. He seems to have it. I don't know about his businesses. I mean, he, he just laid off a bunch of people at Tesla. I mean, I get... I'm a fan of people trying different things, mm-hmm. um, but I don't. But I don't know if he personally is actually a reasonable guy. Mm-hmm. I have I know nothing about him personally. Honestly, mm-hmm. I just know that sort of outwardy, mm-hmm. outward, mm-hmm. sort of showboating personality. So who knows what he's like in real life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's being accused by a potter from Colorado of stealing his image. An image that he made, which is a unicorn farting electricity. So we now have a copyright battle over a unicorn with <laughs> lightning bolts coming out, out of its, of its ass. ass. <laughs> Happening between an well, artist in Colorado and an extremely high profile entrepreneur. Now, mind you, unicorns are a thing. I can't imagine there's more than one person, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that. I, I mean, that's got to be tough because he could just throw a bunch of lawyers at one guy, at, at someone, and I don't know how that works. Yeah. Because, I mean, intellectual theft or art theft, I mean, there isn't there isn't a week that goes by that I don't see someone, because um, uh, I've got a lot of friends that are artists, they aren't posting <coughs> that they or their, or, or their friend's work was stolen by this company or that company is being, you know, reproduced here or there. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just so hard to fight that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you yeah. know, he did get some boosts in sales, but Elon Musk is saying he can sue for whatever he wants. Um, but, uh, you know, I think he's being unreasonable. And the artist said, you know, I love his work, but he's not above copyright law. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. I just kind of feel if if you own a car company and make rockets and shit, you could throw the, you could throw the unicorn. You could, yeah, I mean, you, mean, you don't think that it, it wouldn't have, all that's going there, you just couldn't pay the guy for the image. I mean, right. you know, you can buy it. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. A lot of these large companies steal, you know, steal stuff. You see, like, here's my image, here's this, and you see it. But how do you fight? You know, fighting that is just a bitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Argentinian weather girl was dubbed the world's hottest weather person. So we get to hear her favorite sex stuff because why wouldn't we you know because that's the next <laughs> because, thing that happens because of course uh, she's female she's good looking so she can make a couple extra bucks talk <laughs> making shit up about sex because that's what she's doing she's probably thinking how big of a check you gonna write yeah I'll, what do you want to know you bet no <laughs> someone who um is constantly sharing uh pictures of herself working out and in various bikinis here's her revelation she likes to Eat before having sex and incorporate foods into sex sessions. <laughs> I hope she got paid. So she probably has to starve to look like that, but she's going to say that food isn't. Yeah, okay, fine. It's probably the only time she eats. I don't know. I just love, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're they ask her what her favorite foundation is and who her favorite chew person is because, of course, it's female. She's good looking, so she's you know we're going to ask her about sex. Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've never asked uh, uh, Channing. Uh, oh, they probably have asked Channing Tatum. The top guy, the top sort of drooly dudes, probably get asked some stupid shit too. But they get it, you know, asked other stuff in addition to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, on that particular topic, mm-hmm. um, I'll never forget. It was a thousand years ago. Um, Jewel had come out with um, an album, and she came to Cities '97 to be on our show. And I did some research. Anytime we had an artist on, I would always kind of, mm-hmm. you know, do some due diligence. Um, in addition to the mandatory questions about 
the new stuff, which allows them to promote their album, which is why they come in the first place. Mm -hmm. I read this thing where Jewel was complaining about interviews and touring promo tours because she hated all the inane questions. She's like, I hate it when people ask me about lipstick or whatever. And I'm like, okay, so I'll, I'll try to think of some really good questions for Jewel. So I did. Mm -hmm. And um, she went on KDWB first. Mm -hmm. And then she came over to us, which I'm sure you can imagine was a completely different vibe, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we get into it, you know, greet, greet, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I told her, I kind of set it up by saying, you know, I heard that you, it can be frustrating and get real old when you're running around from, you know, different city to city promoting mm -hmm. yourself, asking, you know, kind of stupid questions. So if you had your choice, what would you like to talk about today? Like mm -hmm. what's on your mind? And she went completely mute, looked at me like I was on crack. And she's like, well, nobody's ever asked me before. And it's not like the station I was just on. And she completely shit the bed on her answer. <laughs> and I'm like, you need to stick to the lipstick colors. <laughs> If you're going to say something, you might as well have, like, you know, it would be really nice to talk about the the time when, you know, I don't know, anything. or anything. Her, her, her Her most recent uh, charity gig or something. Or the fact that, uh, uh, I don't know, but she just, she was just totally shocked by it, huh? Yeah. She was just, she was on such autopilot that she couldn't. And I thought I was handing her this giant, not only softball, but sort of a On a gift. silver platter. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Yeah. Talk about backfiring. Oh, God. So I'm like, oh, wow, you might be a bimbo after all. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So uh, this chick uh, was an Air Force. She was in the Air Force for 10 years. She was actually a dental technician in the Air Force, which it kind of, I, I always, in, in, until I see something like this where someone like that is referenced, I forget that they have like. Everything. Everything. Every career inside of the arm because they have to like take yeah, care of care the of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she gets out of the service. Thank you for your service. Alicia Megan is her name. Um, but now she makes $80,000 a year um, posting herself working out in superhero costumes on Instagram. Does it, no, 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 okay, not like known superhero costumes, or does she make up things? Um, you know, I don't know. It doesn't because really I mean, say. you know, because she's like working. I mean, you know, Marvel and Disney and DC protect their stuff. Pretty no, I'm guard. sure it's not. I'm so sure so not. she so she just she's, creates yeah like superhero stuff, and she uh, has um and, well, she's a, you know you have to certain um certain requirements to be in the armed forces. I yes. mean, I suppose you get older and more generally and you tend to get fatter and squishier, but yep. if you're still, you know, still could possibly be handed a rifle at any time, most likely you're probably in reasonable good shape. Well, she trains mm -hmm. twice a day um, and, uh, you know, does all this uh, different things. She also sells leggings and runs a boot camp, um, but she makes a living doing this um, and she's call called a social media influencer. Yeah. And you know what? I think that's awesome. Uh, that people I can just, go out there, get a following, and make money. I just, I, I, and the thing is, oh, it is, it just, you know, looks, if someone's willing to pay for it, <laughs> I just, I've never had a problem with that. I mean, there's plenty of folks, I mean, there's, I mean, there are people, and I heard this on uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me or something in, in, in the Bluff the Listener thing a couple of weeks ago. There are websites that, where you just log in and watch people study. They're not nude. They're not doing anything. They're not talking. You just watch somebody study. I, I can't, you know, fine. I'm like, you know, I have totally missed the boat on, like, I'm not sure what would people want. I'm sure there's anything you want to watch is probably out there. So watching someone work out dressed as a superhero, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I got to come and maybe, maybe I can make money wa uh, having people watch me cut my cat's nails. I have no idea. I'm sure there's probably videos out there of it. You know, I absolutely applaud the people that managed to pull this off Yeah, and how they I, I, figured that that would work and, and then they get it to work. And then they get, amazing. yeah. I mean, I, what, what's the tipping point? How does it find out? I mean, you know, this, I mean, you could, you could. I just, I don't, you know, like, okay, this person has, you know, uh, 500,000 followers and they, you know, and they test lipstick. I don't, I, I, I'm fascinated I by I this know. concept. And, and that's not even, I mean, not even counting the folks that do the sex stuff. I mean, there's so many people that do that, but there's that's just so many people. boring now. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just, you're watching. I'm just like, oh my God, that's fascinating. I know. I know. I how bet there's you, vacuum Can in I it. just ask you a question? Mm -hmm. How do you know this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you know that there's websites to watch people study, Colleen? Wait, wait, don't tell me. It was it was Bluff the Listener game. 
They had it as one of their categories. Oh, okay. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it was okay. like the, yeah. They, they, they we're talking. Just asking. Yeah, no, no. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it was it was it was a bluff to listen to as someone who's making money doing something, and then one of them, there, there was someone that was offered like an, an endorsement deal, and this was one of the things. That's just hilarious. watching stuff. Yeah, that's hysterical. And I'm just really this is the thing. Yeah, I was yeah. just I, and it, it's a whole thing. It's yeah. everything is a thing. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know if there's anything new. What, what? But what could, I, mm-hmm. I do like the fact though that anybody can make it. I mean, it's. Mm-hmm. It, I think things are more wide open. Opportunity is more wide open than they've ever been. And mm-hmm. kind of just because I mentioned my former life in radio, record companies, television networks, and even movie studios do not own us anymore mm-hmm. or, or control what we see. Mm-hmm. Things can break through in any yeah. number of ways. And that's, I love that. The YouTube, cha- you know, who knows oh, God, what the next YouTube channel is going to be where someone right. does something. Right. You know, it's, just, it's just fascinating. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I cannot believe that this has not happened before mm-hmm. or that we haven't talked about it. Okay. Google Maps caught. There's people doing shit on Google Maps. So, oh, no, it, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's out there, but, you know, they are, a lot of people are creeped out. They find mm-hmm. this to be an invasive kind of deal. And mm-hmm. in this case, it was. A lot of people go on there to kind of explore remote places that they might want to go vacation. Mm-hmm. And this one was, um, boy, no per. Noparat Tara Beach in Thailand and it's two people getting started and the, the trunks come off, the chick is pulling the trunks off and then it stops at that point so we don't know if anything ever happened but that's creepy to know that you're out somewhere, you think you're alone and there's a satellite thing fl- or a drone or some shit flying around and mm-hmm. now next up you're picture, Google. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're picture and stuff like that. You don't know what the photo is going to be. The, there's all sorts of stuff that drive by cars, what people have caught and there, you can like you can look up, I saw something about like bodies on Google you know, people driving by and seeing things yeah. and you're just like, oh my god. Because I always, you know every now and then when I'm looking up something I'll, and I'll go, oh, that picture was... De- that, yeah, I, it took about a year and a half before the image of my house when I put a new roof on it to show up as the correct color. I like, oh. yeah, there you go. Or hey, my new gardens are in now. Or um, the Google image they put an addition on the high school near my house, and that didn't. It took a while for it to, you know, when you were looking at the area for it to show up. You know, it's weird. Kind of on that same note, I've been watching mm-hmm. a lot of uh, British-made television shows on Netflix and Hulu lately. Mm-hmm. I've been watching mid. There's like 19 years of something called Midsummer Murders. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right because I, and I just, I just laugh. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm learning so much British slang. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. what I'm learning is that British people are highly surveilled. There is fucking CCTV cameras everywhere mm-hmm. in Britain everywhere mm-hmm. so if you're gonna go do something don't do it in the uk because well, they've also smile. had a lot of um i mean for for quite a number of years i mean you're also not gonna uh last time i was there and other places too where they had a fair amount of domestic terrorism that's why i yeah, mean they, I know, she, but, you know there was a lot of stuff blo- a lot of stuff blowing up yeah mm-hmm. i just i don't know it's a new world mm-hmm. did you hear about scarlett johansson um bailing out of a film project um over the backlash she was cast as a trans person oh yeah i just saw something about in it just it was just as, as a reference to another story or something is that you know i always thought the idea i mean i and, and this had sort of like whitewashing you know there's a, a person of color or a person of this you know that in, in a book or or another and then it turns into a movie mm-hmm. and you know they, it goes to a high you know a highly paid known you know white performer Mm-hmm. You know, whitewashing and stuff like that. So, was this you know, this is uh, uh, hetero washing of a of a of a trans character? Yeah. I mean, I, folks are actors. I mean, and it's a trans character. It's not like they changed. You know, I don't that one. I don't quite understand. I mean, if if, if originally the act the actor, if there was something about the actor or the or 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 the character, let me say, there's something about the character that. Uh, of a certain ethnicity or skin color or something like that, and then you change the character and made it white, I can see why that's well, going through was, there. Okay, here's but, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. There was a whitewashing of a previous character she played. Mm-hmm. The film um, Ghost in the Shell was supposed to be an Asian, mm-hmm. and they cast her. Next up, there's a trans character, and she gets cast, and the trans community said, you know, this sucks. Mm-hmm. And so she backed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, she probably didn't need the, the bad. But stuff. that all said, though, it is kind of weird. I think this is where you were kind of getting at. Actors 
live in portraying things that they aren't. Right. So, so it's a different. I don't know if it's the same as society because it's not society. I it's mean, it's not theater. like the old. It's not. I mean, it's not like they took uh, Mickey Rooney in in Breakfast at Tiffany's and made him an Asian character. Yeah, I mean that's hideous. Yeah, I mean, and I get it. You know, but then again, if you've got a character that was written a certain way, changing it is going through there. But I don't understand how playing a tra- you know, I just. But uh, yeah, once again, it, th- th- that is a very gray area on that one. It's going through well, there. when it comes to acting because they're yeah, playing yeah. things that they're not. So I have a harder time condemning that than I do certain other things that happen mm-hmm. in real life. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Um, okay. Why is this funny? It just is. Have you ever heard of the Bayeux Tapestry depicting the Norman Conquest of 1066? It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's it's an 11th century artifact. Okay. And a um, professor uh, at the, he's a medieval professor at Oxford. Um, he he went through the entire thing and because I'm sure this is what everybody needs to know and this is what you know we're paying our professors do. He found 93 phalluses <laughs> in the tapestry. <laughs> well, I think one of the reasons you go through this stuff is that people tend to forget that I mean there are manuscripts handwritten hand scribed manuscripts that have naughty pictures all the way through them I mean people like sexy stuff or human bodies or penises boobs everything you find this stuff going back centuries Yes. It's not new. And I think it's just another way to say, by the way, you know, there were there were no good old days, you know, when it comes to people like sex. They've we always liked sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they hid these. Uh, so they decided uh, to put some penises in it. Huh? Mm-hmm. Eh, good for them. Yeah. Good for good for these uh, uh, for the folks. And there's probably women. You know, I don't know how, how many male uh, uh, tapestry sewers or weavers or or could have been i don't know whoever it is and if the gal- i like the i like the i like these people i do too and, and if, if i'm weaving tapestry if that's what i have to do for my life i'm gonna throw some junk in there because 